hey, today's video is about shortest. That allows you to QA via natural language AI tests. So it looks something like this, shortest, log into the app using email and password, and the AI will basically go and check that it can actually do this and then decide at the end if it passed or failed. Now in this video, I'm gonna dive into the code behind it. If you're new to the channel, check out my other videos. Every week I go into the code behind a different project. Shortest is by the Antiwork team. So that's the team that built Gumroad. And here you can see Sahil's profile. He is basically open sourcing everything they have at Antiwork, including Gumroad in the future. But one of the first projects they've open sourced is Shortest. So what I went and did to test out Shortest myself, I created a new website um, using bolt.new. Wait, if you wanna have a video on the code behind Bolt as well, this is also open source. But here you can see I put in a prompt, basically build me a Next.js app that can go in spell check or grammar check any website. And this is what it went and built. Here I can put in any URL I want and click check. And it actually works amazingly enough. First time I just downloaded it, updated all the packages and then set my own open AI API key and it worked. So here you can see I put in my own website, getinboxzero.com, hit check, and the, this is the result it got. It went and fetched the website, it passed the page, and saw if there was sort of anything wrong with it. And here you can see all the fixes it thinks I should make. This mini tool I built is open source as well. You can check it out here. And here you can see I've actually gone and put a shortest test in. So validate that we can submit URL and get a response. Now I've gone and run it. You can see you run it with PMPM shortest. And I also did debug AI because that helps to show us what's happening behind the scenes. You don't... So here you can see once we start going, we start saving screenshots. You can see a screenshot of what I have. And each time it's basically using Anthropic computer tool to go and see what's on the page and then interact with the page. And that way it's going to go and run the test basically. So the first thing you, you'll see here, I'll help execute this test case. Let me start by taking a screenshot. So we go and do that. That's a screenshot file basically. And then we're passing that back to the AI. So the AI says, I can see the website spell checker interface with a URL, a check button and so on. So now it decides what it's gonna do for the test. It's gonna click the URL input field. It's gonna click over there. Then it's gonna enter test URL. So in our case, get inbox zero.com. And then it's gonna click the check button. And then it's gonna hope that it's gonna come back with a result. So you can see it's doing a mouse move over here. It's running our browser for us and it's going to do a, it's gone and done a left click every time we're returning the result to it and it's doing telling us what the next step is that it wants to do. So now it's putting in the test URL o over here. I can see it's actually example.com. It didn't use it get inbox zero.com, I guess, for that, but not to worry. You can see again, it's moving the mouse. Now it's sleeping for three seconds and then it gets the result over here, screenshot taken. And then finally, you can see that based on the text execution, I can confirm that we were able to enter the URL, click the check button and actually get a result. And if I take a look here, you'll see these are the screenshots it took. Here you can see the mouse cursor as part of the screenshot. And then finally hit check and it got the results, which is what we were expecting. If you want to set up Shortest yourself, so just go to shortest.com. You can see how to install it, how to run it. You add a config file that looks something like this. You need to use Anthropic because we're using computer use. We're using the computer tool basically to do all the screenshots and clicking around the app. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do as well, like call block callback functions, lifecycle hooks, like before all, before each, and so on. So now let's dive into the repo and the core of the video where we actually understand how Shortest was built. So I've gone and cloned Shortest locally on my own computer. Um, you'll see a whole bunch of different stuff within the repo, but what actually matters is what's in the packages Shortest directory. The rest of the repo is just there to help. It is just a demo app to go and test Shortest basically. But what you actually care about is packages Shortest, at least for this video, that's what I care about. Here you'll see within the source folder, we have everything we want. And let's take a quick look at the package.json. So over here, we'll see the bin. So this is what we actually call the CLI command. You'll see uh, this CLI bin. So we're gonna take a look at that file in a second. Here you can see different scripts uh, to test, to build the project and so on. You can see the dependencies. We've got very little over here actually. Um, you can see we've got like Pico colors. We don't use commander.js, which you'll find in other projects. Uh, other CLI tools, we do we have OTP layer. That's to do with um, GitHub uh, OTP to log in. You can see some yeah, dev dependencies that we have detecting package manager, but these are like sort of really like minimal usage. Uh, the main packages we're gonna be using, Playwright, ESBuild, and Anthropic AI SDK. I think that's sort of the core of the app. Those three packages honestly make up most of what we're gonna see today. In terms of like how this actually works over here when we do PMPM shortest, so that's gonna go and call this bin command. And so let's take a look at how that works. If we go to bin.ts, we will see over here um, the CLI tool we have. We do not use commander.js. So if you want to see my video on the Shad CN CLI tool that does use commander, and that's like quite a popular choice, but here we're just sort of going to do it bare bones. You can see we're defining some flags that we want to use. Here's the help command. 
we, over here we use pico colors so that's doing things like bold and dim and like can give different colors for the output basically that we see over here for example this is pico.green when we ran it we used debug ai so that we could go and see the output he can see some environment variables we can use to set this up but let's actually dive in and we get to main and you can see like there's some stuff related to github if you want but the main thing we actually care about is over here this is the entire CLI. So first we have a test runner that we're going to set up. We're going to initialize it. And then we're going to run through all the tests, basically. If we do run all, it will be all tests. If we set a test pattern, for example, I only want login.test.ts to run. So it will go and run this. So that's a way to limit it down to just one file running instead of all the 20 tests that you have. I will jump back to test runner in a bit. But first, what I want to do is go through run all and see what happens when we actually run through all the tests. So here you can see we do some initialization over here. We find the different test files. So that's just going to go through our project basically and find all the tests in the tests uh, directory and also dot test dot ts files and then we're going to go through all those files and then do execute test file and then by the end of it we're going to log the results give a summary so the summary i mean it's going to be like hey these are the tests we failed 10 tests we passed however many tests how long it took and if i just show you that over here you can see here one test passed this is duration and this is when we started the test so this is the final output after running through all of it if we go into execute test file, you'll see we start running through the tests. Um, you'll notice we have the shortest registry. So this is quite important. If I quickly search for this in the project, you'll find it's in the packages shortest source file. So here you can see we're setting up this global state and we're storing uh, global shortest basically. And we've got this registry. And so all the tests that we find, we're going to put into an array over here and we're going to run through those tests. And here we, you've got other helper functions. Like if you want to run before all or after all or before, each on each test. So we also set those up. I'm not going to dive into that, but you could sort of figure out how it works. But test is sort of the main uh, thing we care about. So execute test file. We have the registry that we've set up. We're going to have to see how, how does that actually get filled in. Well, actually, we'll see this in a second. So we're going to clear all the tests in case anything's there. Um, here are the current test files. Now we're going to start the logging. We've got the compiled path. So we're going to take this test file and we're going to compile it. So this is the key part of what's happening here. We're going to take this file name and we're gonna get down to here and we're gonna use ES build to go and build it. So here you can see this is build from ES build. I have another video that I did on trigger.dev not that long ago, and that used a similar pattern. So I talk a little bit more about ES build there, but it's the same idea here. Basically, we're taking the file that we have, we're building it, um, we're gonna put it in this output path over here, basically, and we're gonna return the output path of where we built it. And you can see here that we're um, also making use of shortest and we're taking shortest source index.ts. So this is quite important. So that's the file we saw a second ago over here, as you can see on the left. And so we went and set up this registry. Now, why this is important, you'll see in a second, but we, basically we've gone and compiled the file over here. And if I jump back to compile file, you'll see I've got the compiled path and now we're actually going and importing it. So that file that we had, we've gone and imported it. We've gone and imported it. That's this over here, what we've gone and imported. So now this is going and running and shortest is going and running. Now what is happening when I run shortest? Because that's happening in this import step. And what's happening is this index.ts file is being called um, because over here at the bottom, you'll see that we are exporting shortest over here, which basically is basically test. And so we're running this function. Over here, when we do shortest validate that we can submit URL, we are running this test function over here. And you can see we pass in the name of the function as the first argument. So that over here is the name of function. In our case, it's the name. And what we're doing is we're calling create test chain. Now here's that registry I spoke about again, um, the global shortest registry. Now, if we have a function, we're gonna do one thing. I don't care too much about that use case. I care about when we're doing a test using the AI, which is passing in a name over here as a string. Now, what we'll do over here, basically create, create test chain. So we're calling shortest over here. That is calling this over here. And what we're doing is we're setting up this test and we're doing registry tests.set. So we're adding this name or function, this name basically, into our test registry. And we're also pushing it to current file tests. And so now the test, is in the registry. It's, it's, it feels like overly complicated maybe in terms of what's actually happening. But all we did is basically push this string into an array, basically a registry. So these are the tests we can now, get, now go and run. Because now if I jump back to the runner, you'll see the registry over here, because of this import line, it's been filled up with this array of strings, basically. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to launch the browser, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. We're going to create a test context, and we're going to go and run through the different tests. 
if we've got any before oils, we're going to do that. We'll do after oils as well at the end. We're not going to hand, look at the hooks, but you can see how they hook in pretty easily right now. And here you can see for every test of registry current file tests, we are going to go and execute the test. And then by the end of it, we're going to report the test depending on what the result is, if we passed or if we failed. And so over here, you can see this is a report of a test that we passed basically. So if I go into execute test, this is where we're actually going and executing it. We've got that context again. We've got a browser tool. So the browser tool is basically Playwright that is running for us. And it's a browser tool because the AI can go and manage this for us. It can handle this browser. Over here, you can see the AI client. So we're setting up Anthropic as an agent basically that is able to use a computer to do computer use and use this browser tool. Here you can see we're starting to use the browser tool, we're calling it ourselves manually. So we're gonna take a screenshot just to, for the initial state to start everything off. And then we're gonna go and set our prompt over here. So this is to pass to the AI, to the LLM. And here you can see the test. I'm gonna show you this, that we actually got this output ourselves. And once we set that all up, we're gonna go and process the action. And by the end of it, we're gonna get a result and basically say yes or no, we passed or failed the test. In terms of the prompt that we actually sent in, so let's take a look for that. Because I ran it in debug mode, uh, PMPM shortest debug AI. So you can see over here the prompt that we have. And the prompt is literally validate that we can submit a URL and get a response. So that's exactly what we have up here. And then after that, you can see the AI starts working and I help execute this test case and so on. Now, this isn't the only prompt we're passing in. Now, I'm, I'm going to dive into the AI client browser tool because I've skipped a whole bunch over here. But the AI client, before we saw process action, basically, this is what goes and runs when we start running the test. Um, if I do make request, you'll see over here, the prompt is passed in, the browser tool is allowing me to use Playwright is passed over there. And you'll see, I collect all the messages from when I'm speaking to the AI. If I have debug modes, I'll be uh, console logging this. So we actually saw that this is the prompt that we went and uh, console logged ourselves. Here you can see the first message. We go and push it to the array of messages. But then after that, we're going to do a while true. So we're going to keep looping through this. And this is the main part of the AI where it actually goes and runs this. So it's got a system prompt that it gets in. It gets some AI tools as well. And we're also saying we want to use a computer use tool. And of course, our messages, which includes our prompt. Now, we're going to keep calling this over and over and over again. And over here, you can see every time tool use is called, we are going to basically go and use the browser tool to go and execute that tool. And when we get a result, we're gonna add that to the, the messages array. It could be an image if it's a screenshot or it could just be regular text. So let's take a look at our system prompt and also our, our AI tools. The system prompt, you can see you're a test automation expert working with a Chrome browser and so on. This is an example test case, exactly what we saw. So a test would be log into the app using GitHub login. And here you can see all sorts of important global rules. So wait for conditions, how you should use tools, screenshot rule, test expectations, all expectations listed in the test instructions must be fulfilled. And you could also have an option to test the email using Melosaurus. Finally, um, your task is to do the following. So th this is sort of the key part. Execute browser actions to validate test cases. Okay. Use provided browser tools to interact with the page and return test execution results in strict JSON format. So the result should be either pass or fail. And then we should also pass a reason. But this result over here is going to determine what we see over here in our CLI. If it was a pass or fail, the AI is going to decide if it was pass or fail. So we know the system prompt. We know the prompt that we've passed in ourselves. And then we've got the AI tools as well. So this is the most important one. It's a computer use tool by Anthropic. We've got other stuff like if you want to log into GitHub, check email, you can sleep for a bit, you can run a callback and you can navigate as well. But the main one is um, computer usage where the AI can use your computer. And so if you want to read more about that, just go to the Anthropic docs over here. Um, you'll see what that looks like. And you can see we're, when you're doing computer tool use, so there are all these different actions that the AI can do on your behalf. So it's things like um, type in some string or, you know, hit some keys, for example, like return or take a screenshot, or double click on something or move the mouse around. And so if I search in our project for that, like where is it actually used? So you'll see over here in browser tool, we can do move mouse and that's part of execute. And so in that loop before the, uh, the agentic loop we saw basically, uh, we did browser tool execute and we passed in some input that the AI has basically told us, okay, this is like how I want to do use computer use. So over here, you'll see that we have like left click, right click if I want to move the mouse around. So that's all done over here. And this is basically managing a browser for us. 
when we started looking at the CLI tool, so we had test runner over here. We set up all sorts of things over here. It's the test compiler, which is what used ESBuild to go and build everything for us. And we have the logger, which logs things to screen. But also in the initialize function, which I didn't cover, but we have this browser manager. And the browser manager, here you can see we're using Playwright. And so we're launching the browser. If we don't have it, we're installing it. And then also when we're launching it, we're setting up a new page, basically making sure that page is ready for use. So every time we're interacting with the browser, basically Playwright, you'll see it loading on your screen when it's doing that. And it is gonna be taking screenshots along the way, like the different screenshots we saw over here. And here you can see that back and forth flow that we showed you before. So we have the AI, every time it's taking a step, like I'll help uh, execute this test case. Let me start by taking a screenshot and so on. Here's the screenshot you get back. And we keep going through moving the mouse. And so this is how all of that is happening. The AI every time is asking us to move the mouse or like left click in this case, or type in some text, for example, example.com. I want you to like the action to type it in. And so how that was happening, it gets to this part over here. We understand the AI is asking us to execute something in the browser tool. We're doing that, typing in some text and over here is where it actually goes and happens. And then we pass back the result for it. So over here, you can see we're doing type. We do like wait a bit of time, um, type some text. and So I think that's basically it for the project. I'm gonna go through this again, just for a minute. So you understand how it works end to end. Cause like we've covered like a lot of different moving pieces, but now I'll talk about the full flow uh, end to end once again. So over here, we ran PMPM shortest CLI tool, and that somehow went and ran this file over here and logged some results, passed or failed back to us. When we called this over here, PMPM shortest, so that ran this bin file, uh, we set up some things we needed, like browser tool and so on. And then we went and ran through the different tests. So if I went to run all, we found all the different tests, and then we needed to execute every test file we found. We set up this registry, which was very important because we went and compiled all the different test files we had. This is an example of a test file. And when shortest was called on it, it basically pushed this string over here into an array. Um, and that happens in this file, of, in this line over here, when we import the compiled path, we are adding this string to the array. And that's a test that we wanna go and run. Now in this registry, we wanna loop through all those files and do execute tests each time. And over here, once we've got the result, we wanna report the test to the CLI output. The test execution itself, we set up a browser tool, basically a browser that we can automate with the AI client, which we did over here. The AI client could loop through and run as an agent. So it could control the browser for us and do all sorts of things. And by the end of it, we got over here to AI client process action, which is where it actually ran as an agent and gave us the result and basically told us, did we pass or fail or not? So I hope you enjoyed the video, enjoyed doing this one. Uh, if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. I run through the code behind different open source projects like I did this week, but I've done many other videos in the past, tools like trigger.dev or bolt.new showing you the code behind them or shad CNC ALI. So I'd also love it if you gave Inbox Zero a star on GitHub. This, this is my project. It's basically an AI personal assistant for your email. So if you wish that you had a personal assistant that just managed email for you, but you figured, well, I can't spend $3,000 a month on a personal assistant. So maybe an AI could do it for me. So that's what Inbox Zero is and it's fully open source. So yeah, feel free to run it yourself or use the hosted version at getinboxzero.com.